So we're actually going to start this off with uh, Everson Griffin, where if you recall, he was in a very similar role to Ifadio Denigbo early in his career. That being said, before he became the starter in 2014. So from 2010 to 2013, he was able of racking up 17 and a half sacks with 67 combined total tackles, 21 tackles for loss, and 38 quarterback hits with his best year coming in 2012 where he got eight sacks and got 20 quarterback hits. So I'm not going to go through all of them, but that is because there's, you know, that's a lot of numbers that I don't think a lot of people care about. But Griffin, his average on the year, like his average stat line for the entire season was, well, the average for that time anyway, like his average season for that time period. He averaged 4.4 sacks a year, 16.7 combined total tackles, 12.2 solo tackles, 4.5 assisted tackles, 5.2 tackles for loss, and nine and a half quarterback hits a season. That's what he averaged. Now, uh, t- the 2019 version of Ifadi Odenigbo stacks up pretty well here when you consider those averages. He has five sacks on the year, com- so 4.4 on the average for Griffin, five. 16.7 combined for Griff, 16 for Odenigbo, 12.2 solo, 14 for Odenigbo, two assisted tackles, although... Four and a half assisted for Griffin's average. Six tackles for loss this year with Griffin's 5.2 average. And he has nine quarterback hits, which Griffin's average was nine and a half. So that's only 14 games in. He has a chance to beat some of these still. So like the assisted and the quarterback hits, he still has a chance to really kind of beat those where most of them he's either beat or met. And I'm not saying Odenigbo is going to be Everson Griffin 2.0. I don't want to put that into anybody's mind. It's like, oh, he's guaranteed to be Everson Griffin again. No, no, he's not. I don't think it's guaranteed. But it's a very similar looking career arc, especially when you look at how just how they're used, especially during this time frame. They both were used as this early pass rusher or well, interior pass rusher early in their career. So, and they both kind of win with the same similar thing of a lot of violence and a lot of explosion. Can you handle it? And typically it's hard for people to handle, especially if you're getting them on guards and things like that. And which is why I think you also saw Griffin have a ton of success because he's just more athletic. He's more violent. He's more explosive. Very similar with Ifadio Denigbo. Despite being lighter, because I think they have him listed like, what is it, like 258? Griffin's pretty close to 270 or 280. He's just a thicker person. So um, despite being nearly 20 pounds lighter, he kind of has a similar way of playing to Everson Griffin and where you can kind of look at this like, can can lightning hit twice potentially? Potentially. And I think it potentially could, but I, I still think... It's, I'm not going to, once again, I'm not trying to say he's guaranteed to be Everson Griffin again. But if history is repeating itself, I don't think we would argue with this. Because then we have Ifadi and Daniil Hunter as two very young players. And if Ifadi is very similar to Griff, we have a very similar dynamic for many years to come. Not just for the next, well, I guess even right now, Griffin right now is slated to be a free agent, I believe. It's a weird option thing (laughs) where if he got like, if he played a certain percentage of snaps or he got more than six sacks, which I'm pretty sure he's beaten both. I think the contract voids automatically. So he is a free agent right now, Everson. So, um, yeah, this could be a potential real thing to be looking at as we come closer and closer to this off season. And like I said, not guaranteed, but potential replacement for Griffin. But I am also could see them potentially saying, well, I really haven't had a real interior pass rusher that could do a lot of things. Like Because Richardson was great. I really wanted to keep him, but I feel like in the run game, he was kind of more of a liability. Um, 
So an all-around interior threat like this, we haven't really had next to Linval Joseph since Sharif Floyd. And I, I wonder if that would be like, no, he's good at this. Let's not push him beyond the limits of this because he's very good at this. But I do think this could be a potential future long-term guy, regardless of what they say his role is, because I think he's very good at this role. But I wouldn't see, oh, I wouldn't be opposed to maybe potentially expanding this out to full-time edge like they did with Griffin when Zimmer first got here. Which, if you recall, Minnesota, like right when Zimmer got there, they handed Griffin a, what was it, like a $45 million contract, something like that. And some people were wondering, whoa, 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 whoa. He's never even been a full-time starter. What are you doing? And then all of a sudden he became a Pro Bowl player. So if they're seeing similar things, I think I would trust them on this because they've already done it with Everson. Because once again, when Zimmer got here, Everson was nothing more than like, okay, he's kind of a freak athletically and we can use him in certain situations, but we don't think he's a full-time guy. And then Zimmer came in and it's like, no, that's a full-time guy. And all of a sudden... Griffin. So if they're seeing similar things, I would kind of trust them with this. I'm kind of seeing similar things. doesn't mean they are. They see him every day in practice, but it is certainly something we should be monitoring. You know what I mean? Um, like your comments down below on the thoughts, you know, uh, liking, subscribing always helps. And until next time, I bet you all I do.